Sports Central back at it. Adam Deal, Charles Ashley now joining us. It's the voice mm -hmm. of the Lobos himself, the Robert Portnoy. How lucky are we today, Robert? Hey, I'm lucky. It's great to be with you guys. You're back again. I think he's our second guest who's been on the show twice, so that means we like you. Well, it's good. good. That's, that, good. that's <laughs> a good thing. If you invited me back, then I guess it went okay the first time. Yeah, it went really well. So yeah, what's up? No, it went great. So look, it's three and out now, and, and so we thought we'd bring Robert in mm -hmm. because... He knows more than anybody knows about the New Mexico Lobos. Mm -hmm. And hoop season in full swing, like we've mentioned, Charles. So first topic here on 3 and Out is none other than Lobo Hoops. And listen, Robert, you're the one who's seen it the most. There it is. Lobo Basketball Report. Let's hear it. What do you think so far? What kind of grade would you give the New Mexico Lobos? Three losses early, mm -hmm. a couple wins now late, 6-3 and three on the season. Well, I think Coach Neal said it best with regard to those losses. Really, of the teams that they lost to, the only one that you really like to have back that he called a bad loss was a loss to USC at home. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they had one more on the, the winning side of the ledger and one less on the loss side, and the two teams that they lost to and, and what they've done up to this point in the year, uh, you wouldn't uh, have any complaints, I think, at 7-2. and two. There's really just that one home loss you hate to lose on the pit floor to a team that was picked at the bottom of its league. I agree. And so with that report, everyone's wondering injuries. That's, that's been big. Our, the team has completely changed as far as identity. You have any good updates for us as far as these injuries? Uh, they're not good, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, they, they added another one to the list. Actually, there's uh, one that went on it, but one that came off of it. So oh, I guess okay. there's still three that won't be available for, for this Wednesday's game against Central Arkansas. But uh, Jordan Goodman's back. He's gone through the full 10 days of the, the concussion protocol. He's practiced in full every day since he was cleared. He's getting back in shape, and he's going to be back in the rotation for Wednesday's game. So that's great news. They get that guy, uh, which is obviously big um, because he can do things both inside and outside. Yeah. You know, we saw that great performance he had against George Mason in Puerto Rico. So uh, he'll help with scoring, and, and they, they can always use uh, another big guy, right? Yeah. So. Um, the, the downside of it is that they've lost another guard. They're yes. getting really thin in the backcourt right now. Sam Logwood went down. Uh, he's got a, a shoulder sprain. It's wow. his non-shooting shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's his left shoulder. Um, Coach Neal said that we can't expect him until after Christmas. So a minimum of 10 days, maybe as many as two weeks for him. And you take him out of the backcourt, and you know Cullen Neal and Arthur Edwards are already out of the mix. Yeah. You're getting thin at a spot where you thought you were really long coming into the season. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's been a, a rough go as far as the injuries are. Robert, you have had a lot of experience with ProView Networks in, in broadcasting games. And I like to talk about this guy all the time because you and I have broadcasted many of his games before college, mm -hmm. and that's Tim Jacobs. How big has he been from Oñate High School stepping in? A lot of people didn't even know who this guy was, but you and I knew who he was. Mm -hmm. I cannot emphasize this enough. The Lobos would not be where they are this season without Tim Jacobs. He has been maybe the single most important player on the roster from top to bottom because when they lost Cullen Neal, they lost their primary ball handler mm -hmm. other than Hugh, other than Hugh Greenwood. Yeah. And they needed to get Hugh off the ball so that he could score. They need him to score more, right? Well, if he's on the point all the time, and he's trying to get his shots. He's not doing the things he's supposed to do, getting his teammates involved. And that's why he had that shooting slump. He had three mm -hmm. games in a row where he really struggled to shoot the ball. What Tim has done is taken Hugh off the ball when he's in the game because yeah. he's such a great ball handler. He's also a great creator. Hugh said it best. He said, Cullen brings that uh, dribble penetration, that guy who can break somebody down, draw an extra defender, either get his shot or create one for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Tim Jacobs can do that too. And the Lobos don't have uh, enough of those guys in terms of the, the point guard type mm -hmm. who can run the offense and occasionally get a shot or create one for a teammate. And it's really helped out Hugh. I think he's been the unsung hero. An of the team. injury is never good, right? Mm -hmm. So Colin Neal's injury obviously is terrible. But do you think that it's made the Lobos play differently and, and maybe find out who they are at least this season while Colin's been out because they've had to adjust? Tim Jacobs has been able to come in, and now we realize that we're more of a defensive team. We're more of a physical, athletic team that gets our points on the inside. I think Hugh said it best there as well, Adam. He said, we've got to hang our hat on our defense. That's what's going to be our mm -hmm. calling card this year. But the one thing, Adam, that it has done for the offense, which I think has been really important, because Cullen has been such a good three-point shooter when he played earlier this year, shooting 50% mm -hmm. from deep, um, that was a shot that they looked for, right? They realized that they can't rely on the three. Yeah. 
with this current lineup, they've got to get to the goal. So what you've seen is Deshaun Delaney going to the rack mm -hmm. more. You've seen Sam Logwood being more aggressive until he got hurt. You've seen Xavier Adams going down and posting up. Guys trying to get to the rim and, and you know, create fouls. The Lobos shoot a lot of free throws. Okay. That's how they're going to score because they're not really a great jump shooting team. But it controls pace, and I'm sure Coach Neal knows that. The more you go to the basket, the more you post up, the more you control the pace of the game. Threes, long rebounds, teams can get out run, you might not knock it down. Now, now you're behind the eight ball. So I like where they're going right now. And if you graded them right now on the report, what we have, what would we have right now? You know what? It's a B. Yeah. Yeah. It's a B, a good solid B, and mm -hmm. trending toward a B plus, you know. Okay. They've they've won these three games in a row, holding opponents to forty seven points yes. or less. That's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty okay, good. Okay, let's move on here on three and out and let's keep it a little bit more broad now. Yeah. In general, the Mountain West Conference, how do you think that is and where do you think the Lobos fit in? I asked you off camera what you thought, and you still thought third was a good place for the Lobos. You still yeah. think that? Yeah, you know, there's San Diego State, there's Boise State, there's New Mexico and Wyoming. And it's mm -hmm. kind of those four, and, and in particular Wyoming and New Mexico, coin flip maybe mm -hmm. behind the top two right now. They're, those three other teams, it's just the experience, the, the guys that they have returning, the depth of their rosters. Wyoming, you know, they're the ones really knocking on wood right now. They have had the same five guys start all 11 games yeah. up to this point in the year. They're 9-2. and two. That makes a huge difference for a team. Um, and obviously, San Diego State is so mm -hmm. long and so athletic and so good. They've dealt with the injury bug, too. Yeah. They're similar to the Lobos, yeah. right? I mean, well, as, a lot as of far those as being athletic and not really having a guard, yeah. that's how San Diego State is. Well, you know, Winston Shepard, a guy the Lobos recruited, is really coming <laughs> you know, into his own this year. Uh -huh. um, and and they, they, J.J. O'Brien is a fantastic player. Solid, we, consistent. Yeah. You're going to get the same thing out of him every yeah. game. My question is, are you buying into the Colorado State hype? Um, They're 10-0. Uh, you stay how, is a great coach. He's going to coach them up. Notice how I didn't put them in that yes. group. You know what I mean? I, I still prove it to me. Yes. You know what it is? It's, it really is. And we'll find out come December 31st when conference play starts. Um, I love J.J. Avila. Uh -huh. I mean, talk about an old man game. Yeah. That guy <laughs> is unbelievable how he gets shots off when he can't get more than two inches off the ground. Uh -huh. he's, he's, he's really an impressive player. Okay. So he's not buying it yet. Not yet. Me neither. <laughs> me neither. I just wanted to make – I needed someone to agree with me. I'm not buying it. I agree with, with third, maybe fourth, because Larry Nance Jr. in Wyoming, it's always tough to play in Lermy. And it's tough I just to play don't know everywhere. if we'll be ready. I, I, would love, I would love to see – how we respond going into the start of the Mountain West Conference. I think that'll tell us a lot. We'll keep Robert Portnoy right here. You stay here. It's U Sports Central on a Tuesday.